Next, I want to look at how we can use um, something called Google Sheets, which is a spreadsheet that Google has to create um, pie charts and bar graphs. Uh, I have this data here, which has to do with the revenue taken in in 2021 by five fictional grocery retailers. All right, so let's say we have this data and we want to graph it. Well, first off, let me explain how you would get to Google Sheets. Um, as a PCC student, you have an email through PCC, and that email is actually organized by Google. So it's a, a, technically a Gmail. Um, and what you can do, because you have access to Gmail through your PCC email account, is you'll also have access to the Google suite of products, including Google Sheets, which is a spreadsheet. So when you're in your PCC email, and this is my PCC email with the, the emails turned off so that you for a little bit of privacy for students, um, well, you can go up to the upper right and this nine dots that are organized into a square, this is where you can get to the Google Apps. If I click on that, one of the options is Sheets. I can click on that to get to um, Google Sheets directly. Um, and I can, um, you'll have a list of the Google Sheets you've used in the past, so you see them down below. But what I want to do is create a blank sheet and to, to enter in this new data in. Now, I, you actually saw that I already had the data in. I'll go to the one, the Google Sheet, where I have that data already entered in to save a little bit of time. So you would type the data into these columns just like you have it in the table on the page. Um, now, if we want to graph this, we need to highlight that data. So just click on one in the upper uh, left corner and then um, click and drag to get all of it highlighted. And then to graph, you would insert at the top and then choose the option of a chart. So Google Sheets calls all graphs charts. So we would click on chart and Google Sheets is going to take a guess based on what it sees at, as to what kind of chart or graph you want. Now, in this case, I did want to do a bar graph, and there it gave me a bar graph. So this is really good guess on Google's part. Um, but say you didn't want the bar graph. What you can do is you can go over to the chart editor that comes up, and right now we're in setup, and you can change the type of chart that is there. Right now we have a column a chart, but we could do a bar chart where the bars go across um, horizontally or a pie chart. And pie chart is the other type of graph I want to do with this data. Let's go back to the, um, the original bar graph where we have the, gra the bars going uh, vertically. Let's look at how we can make this a better graph. Right now it's pretty good. We've got nice, it's nice looking. Uh, things are spaced out and we did that in like seconds, right, with Google Sheets. Um, but we can make it look better by being more specific with our titles and maybe make being more specific with our ticks on our vertical axis. I'm going to show you how to do that. What we're going to do is go back to the chart editor and instead of setup I'm going to click on customize. First things, let's look at the titles. Um, our chart title right now just says revenue versus retailer. We can be a lot more specific. Um, this is revenue in what year? It's 2021. So I can be more specific by saying 2021 revenue uh, for, uh, in this case, five grocery retailers. So much better title than what was there originally. The other thing we often do with titles is we center them. So I have the option with title formatting to center that and maybe make it bold to make it stand out. Also changing the color, I'm just gonna make it a, a black instead of a dark gray. That can also pop a title out a little bit better. Now the other um, titles we might want to adjust are the axis titles. The retailer is pretty good on the horizontal axis. You could change it to grocery retailer if you want or just keep it uh, retailer. So you could adjust that and as you type that in it automatically changes in the graph. We could also change instead of the horizontal axis title the vertical axis title. Now this one we do need to change because right now it just says revenue. Um, but if you look at the original table that was in your notes again, it said the revenue was in billions of dollars. We need to make sure that's here because otherwise this looks like it's just 25, 50, 75, 100 dollars. So we need to make sure we put in billions of dollars. So we need to show that as part of our title. Um, now the other thing you can do with these horizontal and vertical titles is bold them to make them stand out a little bit more. So I'll go back and do that with the horizontal title as well. So that just makes it stand out a little more. So the titles we now have down, the other thing we could do is um, go to series to change the color on those columns. 
Blue looks pretty good to me, but you could change the color. Um, and then the other thing is grid lines. Right now, uh, on my vertical axis, I'm going from 0 to 100. So you could guess where the heights of these bars are. You know that it, this is this first height is, is closer to 100, but it's between 70 and 100. You could get more, you could probably estimate that better if our grid lines were closer together. So we can do that by going to grid lines in the customization window. And what I recommend doing is instead, right now it says count for the major spacing. If you go to step, you can actually choose how wide you want those to be. Right now we're going, we have widths of 25 units or 25 billions of dollars. Let's change that to be 10. As soon as I enter 10, it will the grid lines will change. Now that's quite a bit of detail, um, and you may be fine with that. And it looks pretty good to me. But let's say you need the graph to be a little smaller. This might, um, and you can change the size of the graph by clicking and dragging, um, and um, making this you know look a little bit different by clicking and dragging um, from the corners of the graph. And if it seems a little too small with a, a, a step of 10, you could change that to 20. And the other thing you can do though, to so that it's not too busy, but you still get more detail, is right now these are what we call major grid lines. You could also have minor grid lines in here, which you can create a step for as well. And when we create a step, and we could have the step be at 10, so you still get the same 0, 10, 20, etc. lines, but now they're not, only every other one is labeled, which makes things a little bit easier to see. Um, it can also be a little easier to see if you put ticks in on the axis. So we see the ticks and the minor ticks for both the major and minor ticks, and that can make it a little easier to see where things are as well. So some tips for making a bar graph look a little nicer, getting a good good titles, both on overall title and then the axis titles, and then adjusting the grid lines can make the graph look a lot better. All right, so let's go back to the data again, and let's redraw this. We use it again to do a, um, a pie chart, and I'll mention a few things to watch out for with pie charts. So I'm going to highlight the data again, and I'm going to insert a chart. Again, it, it thinks I want a bar chart, but this time on my setup, I'm going to choose a pie chart. Now, here's the nice thing. Google Sheets will almost always automatically set you up with labels, which we want. We always want labels on our, our wedges and then percents for our wedges. And those are really good things to have in a, pie, in a pie chart. So make sure that you're choosing those options if it doesn't give it to you already. But really, the one thing you could improve on this is the title. So let's look at customizing um, the title. All right, so instead of just saying revenue, I might say revenue distribution. And it, it's best in a pie chart to talk about a distribution because it's not revenue values in terms of amount of money, it's percentages. So we're looking at the distribution as percentages. So revenue distribution in 2021 among uh, five uh, grocery retailers. So again, being more specific with our title, um, we can make that bold and center it to make it a little bit easier to see. And we could even uh, change the color. Like I like it. I think the black pops a little bit more. So that's a pretty good graph um, for our, our pie chart. There are a couple of things that you might want to consider. If you were doing this in black and white, you might want to go to the uh, pie slice options for customizing and maybe change the color. So I could do um, a different grays um, if I'm printing this in black and white. So I could do each one of these wedges as a different color of gray. Um, but you know the color is nice too so if you're just going to be printing this in color it, it, it does stand out with color it's nice but that's one option another option under the pie chart is to actually have borders on the wedges so you can actually choose um, to outline each wedge and i think the outline with a border makes it look a little bit easier to see um, and then sometimes people, instead of choosing these labels like um, for the wedges, sometimes they will choose to create a legend that is on the right side of the graph or on the left side. I personally like seeing those, those that labeled um, so that we actually see the percents. 
and everything. And if the labels look a little too small in terms of the size, you can change um, the, the font size and make it a little bigger. So there, I've, I've made it a little bigger so that's easier to read. So these are things you can do to make a pie chart look a little bit better. One last thing is if you click away from the graph, your chart editor will go away. If you're ever wondering how to get back to the chart editor, click on the chart again and then these three dots that are in the upper right corner of the chart, you can get back to the editor that way. Once you have the, the chart the way you want it, you could then copy and paste this into a document that you're writing up for a paper or, or some such.